Can I say one more thing before we go? When you're talking about the rioting, yeah, it's terrible about the rioting. I agree with LZ. I hate that. I hate when people riot and yeah. loot that happened in Katrina. But when people are put in dire situations, you don't know how they're going to react. I'm not saying it's right. I personally urge people to be peaceful and calm. I'm not saying I agree with them, but I understand. They should never be riding. I understand. They should never be. They should never be riding. But no, it happens when people are frustrated. You saw those kids. They react. Those breaking out they react the way community. they're going to react. As I said, I don't agree with them, but I understand. Don yeah, Lemon, you can't understand. Kill I do understand it. All right, pretty pathetic. Don Lemon on CNN. Uh, joining us now is uh, boy. I'm so glad to speak to Linda Chavez, syndicated columnist, chairman of the Center for Equal Opportunity. Of course, she worked in the um, Reagan and uh, George H. W. Bush administrations. Hello, Linda. Hi, Steve. Good to be with you. I am so glad that you were able to do this. Thank you very much. All right, great piece, um, uh, Fanning the Flames of Racial Tension. And uh, you, you talk about, and, and this is something that, man, we, from the second he went there and started saying what he was saying, uh, Eric Holder, uh, you know, I, w first of all, you know, the third autopsy was very unorthodox. Him going there at this point or at the point that he went there, uh, very unorthodox. And the things he said, um, you know, I, I, it's personal for me. I mean, that, that's just, that's, been, that's not attorney general-like, is it? No, I think it's actually wrong. I think it actually interferes with the proper criminal justice system. Look, you've got the top law enforcement agent in the country basically going in, starting a civil rights investigation, which implies that he thinks there was a civil rights violation in an incident where we have not had a grand jury examination of all the evidence, we do not know the facts, and in which the media and politicians and activists have continued to use this mantra of the unarmed black teenager shot by a white police officer. I mean, that, that mantra itself is so inaccurate in terms of the way in which it prejudices uh, what happened. You're talking about an adult male. He is 18 years old. You're talking about someone in Mike Brown who was caught on a surveillance tape literally minutes before he encountered uh, the officer, Officer Wilson, showing strong arming, picking up, pushing violently against a, uh, a stack of, of goods, uh, a store clerk stealing. Uh, you've got, you know, so all of these things suggest that there are at least two sides to this story, and, and yet you have the top law enforcement agent in the country coming in and acting as if it's a racist cop that's, you know, gunned down some poor innocent kid just minding his own business on the streets of Ferguson. I think that's just terribly wrong. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, and I asked Kendall Coffey, the famed attorney last week, if this would have legal implications down the road, if this does go to trial, could they take those remarks and, and claim that it prejudiced the case in some way? He wasn't sure about that, but what he did fear, and I think you point this out in your piece, was that if there's no indictment, first of all, what it does is, it, among other things, it raises expectations, and if there's no indictment, it, it, it might make the situation in the long run even worse. Yeah, that's right. And, and, you know, we do have one version of events. Uh, the young man, uh, Dorian Johnson, who was with Mike Brown at the time of the shooting, he was with him at the time of the robbery as well. You know, we have his version of events, and he has recounted them. Unfortunately, his version has changed over time. He's given contradictory remarks, but one of the versions that he gave suggested that the scuffle at the police car occurred when Officer Wilson, according to Dorian Johnson, reached out with one arm, grabbed Mike Brown by the neck, pulled him into the car, and then pulled out his gun. You know, I want to remind your listeners, the man we're talking about, six, you know, this so-called... 290 so pounds, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's 292 pounds. He is six foot four. Yeah. He is... Uh, inches taller than Officer Wilson. He outweighs Officer Wilson by about 100 pounds. And anybody who believes that it's possible that this, you know, this uh, version of events is even plausible, try it yourself. Find somebody 100 pounds bigger than you and try with one hand, if you're a smaller man in a sitting position, to pull that person into a car. 
you know so so i i think you know you know we've got all these versions we've got these kids running around with their arms up acting as if again as if uh, mike brown was in you know was in fact you know in the process of surrendering uh, we don't know what happens. I'm not claiming I know. I'm not claiming that Officer Wilson was justified in doing what he did. I'm saying we don't know. And when you are the Attorney General of the United States and you don't know and it's a criminal investigation, you keep your mouth shut. Absolutely. And, and you know, let me take it now to the media. You heard Don Lemon uh, there in that uh, opening segment where he doesn't condone the rioting, but he understands it. This would not be possible without this, this, this twisted, um, uh, biased media coverage from CNN, from all, all the networks. All of them. I, I mean, mean, again, it's, you know, it's this mantra, unarmed black yep, teenager. Yep. He's 18 years old. He is an adult in the eyes of the law. He, is not, you know, he may not have a gun on him, but he's huge. Right. You know, this is, and he's just strong, strong armed you know, and violently, you know, pushed and shoved a, a store employee. And well, Linda, the great, the great Al Sharpton called it, when he spoke at the church last Saturday, the great Al Sharpton said, let's be real, it was shoplifting. So I want to make that clear. Well, you know, yeah, okay, you know, and maybe it wasn't grand theft larceny. It certainly uh, was strong arm robbery. That's what the cops called arm, it, too, that's, yeah. You know, that's, that's what it's called. Yep. And, and we have the vision of him picking up this this much smaller man he, he did pick him up with one arm by the throat and shove him into uh into a rack of goods yep. uh, and so, by the way you linda know. you know this unarmed thing first of all a cop and i would believe that i would say this cop in this particular instance one thing we do know is he didn't know he was unarmed because until Absolutely. you until you stop a suspect cuff him and search them, you don't know if the guy's got a gun. That, that's exactly right. And I have to tell you funny, it's, some, it's sort of a funny story, Steve. That, you know, I've not had a whole lot of encounters with the police, but uh, two years ago I was pulled over by a Virginia State trooper, and I'm sitting there wondering what I've been pulled over for, and he doesn't come to the car, and he doesn't come, and I sit there two or three minutes. I open the door, I walk out, and I walk over to the car, and here's this aye, aye, aye. actually quite... Yeah big burly yeah. cop and he tells me orders me in no uncertain terms get back into your vehicle put your hands on the wheel do not leave your vehicle uh, cops get threatened when someone comes to them and you know I'm a five foot four right. you know small woman <laughs> uh, but cops are and have reason to be frightened when when you know they are approached you they are don't know to they, do they, they, they don't, don't know, know if what, don't what know. you have what your intent is they just uh, and until that you know that's a, that's adjudicated by them uh, then then they have to fear you know every time they make a stop they, they right. loosen the, 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 the holster thing the, the snap on the holster they have to be ready for the worst we have lots of dead cops in this country this year yeah, that's exactly right. And, and a lot of them have been in instances where someone has come over to the police car and shot the cop. So, you know, so again, we don't know what happened. I don't claim to know what happened. I hope that the grand jury is giving, getting full evidence. I hope eventually we will know. I think the Ferguson Police Department has handled this very badly. I think they, they should have put out some sort of a full statement. They have not done that. Uh, so, in, so instead, what we have is only this version uh, from uh, this uh, accomplice to the robbery and, and guy who was standing there, who himself is wanted uh, on an uh, outstanding warrant and who has pleaded guilty in the past to uh, having filed a false police report. He's not exactly, in my view, a, a particularly trustworthy witness. Right, absolutely. We don't know what's happened. And, and that's why it is so outrageous for the Attorney General of the United States to get involved, to come in, to go visit with the family of, of Mike Brown. Yep. And now the administration is sending representatives to the funeral. Yep. Mike well, Brown. This, and this and we're seeing it wall, right. wall to wall on, uh, on CNN and MSNBC and celebrating. I mean, God, you know, it's, it, it's a shame that he died. Don't get me wrong. It really no, is. No, it is. But, it is but, a shame. but we're Look. celebrating him 
as if he right. were, you know, the, the valedictorian of his of his class, and he was hit by a truck. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, and no, that's exactly right. Or or that he was gunned down by this racist cop. I mean, yeah. that's that's the narrative that yeah. they're portraying. Look, yeah. it is a tragedy. Whatever happened, it's a tragedy, and I understand his parents. I feel for him. Oh, absolutely, parents. absolutely. You know, this is this is a terrible thing to lose a child. But I will say this to any young man, woman, child: if the police approach you and they tell you, you to do something, you do, you do what it. they say. If that and that's the law. Yep. That is respect for Linda. If that would be the case, we, we could avert these tragedies. Listen, I'm up against the clock. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. It's great to talk to you again. Thanks, Steve. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Linda Chavez, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, 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 I have great respect for her. She's a wonderful, wonderful woman and is a very accomplished woman also. All right, folks, up next, you know what you love it. you got to have it. It's the one and only Give Me Five.